In colonial times, the Europeans referred to North Vietnam as Tongking. Today, the Vietnamese people call it Pak Bo. This region contains the mountains of the Northwest, the North and the Northeast, including the large Red River Delta and the capital, Hanoi. The mountains, forests and valleys of the north of Vietnam are still the home of various minorities and mountain tribes that have their own way of life and age-old traditions. Hanoi, North Vietnam's lively capital city. This lake is surrounded by splendid old villas and public buildings. In the early morning, several of the city's inhabitants arrive to go about their traditional exercises. It was here that in 1882, the French created their administrative headquarters and main capital city, the capital of French Indochina. Compared to other Southeast Asian cities that have developed into modern metropolis at breathtaking speed, Hanoi could be described as being a provincial city. The Van Miu Temple once contained Vietnam's first university. It is highly revered. From the 11th century, the city's functionaries were educated here according to Chinese ideals and, prior to becoming mandarins, became well versed in the doctrines of Confucius. The Ho Chi Minh Museum, a three-story concrete building, was inaugurated in May 1990 to commemorate Ho's 100th birthday. Ho Chi Minh was the leader of a rebellion against the colonial authorities and on the 2nd of September 1945, he became the first president of the Republic of Vietnam. Parades are held in front of his mausoleum. nearby Army Museum is open to the public. After the French, the Japanese occupied Vietnam after the Second World War and they lived alongside the French occupying forces right up until the creation of the Republic of Vietnam. In the south, the United States supported General Van Thieu and subsequently bombed North Vietnam. The Vietnam War ended with the signing of a peace treaty in Paris in 1973. And in 1976, the Socialistic Republic of Vietnam was established. The Joa Moko Pagoda is one of the oldest religious buildings in Hanoi. A temple built upon a single column in the center of a small lake. A little time later, King Li Tai To ordered the construction of this pagoda and the future of the dynasty was assured. Zhou Dongzhuan is the name of a large market. It contains a huge variety of goods and it's also where the local people do their adventurous shopping. There's a fine array of fresh fruit and vegetables, electronic gadgets, clothing and TVs, and lots of freshly cooked food. Unfortunately, the atmospheric buildings of the old town are in an extremely poor state of repair. Den Dao Quan, one of the most beautiful Taoist temples in Vietnam, an oasis of tranquility. 
a place to worship benevolent spirits, and for those who believe in divine and spiritual natural powers. Dwa Dran Kuo is probably the city's oldest temple. It was once located on the banks of the Red River, but was relocated to this site in the 17th century. The Temple of National Defense is located on the site of the former summer palace of the Li monarchs. On a dam between Lake West and Lake Trubach, Inaugurated in 1993, the Tang Long Water Puppet Theatre is one of the finest examples of its kind in Vietnam and is so popular that its twice daily performances are completely sold out. The Water Puppet Show is only performed in Vietnam. The puppeteers stand up to their hips in water behind a bamboo curtain to control the puppets with sticks. Poco Hanoi, an old district that is also known as the Town of 36 Crafts, with various rectangular sections separated by walls. The soul of the city lives within its old town, in the streets of its citizens and craftsmen. Thus, the former unique atmosphere of this district was once described. A red wooden bridge leads to a small island in the middle of a lake. Here, in the shade of a tree, is the Ngoc Son Temple. The Long Bien Bridge near the old town spans 1700 meters across the Red River. During the Vietnam War, it was subjected to several bombing raids. As the North Vietnamese rebuilt the bridge each time that it was destroyed, it soon became a well-known symbol of resistance throughout the country. On the site of what was once the city's largest Buddhist pagoda, Catholic missionaries from Hanoi built a cathedral. On Christmas Eve 1886, the majestic and exotic Hanoi Cathedral was consecrated to St. Joseph. Den Quan Tan, the richly adorned Temple of the Great God, dates back to the 11th century and is dedicated to the Vietnamese God of War. Legend has it that Tran Vu fought against a fox with nine tails. During several days of battle with his demon, a hole appeared in the ground and filled up with water. Thousands of years ago, myth and legend once influenced the foundation of this fascinating city. Over the centuries, Hanoi has been frequently conquered lost its status as a capital city and also changed its name several times. But it has survived and is still full of timeless charm and aged beauty. Nine-tenths of the North Vietnamese people crowd into the fertile plains of the Delta, mainly between Hanoi and the harbour town of Hai Pong. This area is still the most important economic region of North Vietnam. In the Red River Delta, there are two harvests each year. But the country of the dismounted dragons has become increasingly industrialized. Thus the country is going through a period of noticeable transformation. 
Both traditional and modern contemporary times live side by side for a hundred kilometers and right up to the Gulf of Tonkin. Haipong is the most important industrial harbour town in North Vietnam. It has a population of 1.5 million. Under French rule, thousands of workers built this city at record speed. The harbour was enlarged and it became the largest in Indochina. Thus Haipong soon developed into an important trading center for coal, ore and tropical wood that the French exported to Europe. As there are no bridges here, the fastest way to travel between the many small islands of the delta is by ferry boat. The islands are extremely fertile and the farming families that live on them supply the mainland and keep the rest of the produce for themselves. Fishing is also important and is the main business of this region that enjoys an abundance of water. The Red River is vital for those who live and work in this area. Another ferry boat waits for its passengers. The ferry boats travel throughout night and day between each bank of the wide tributary. When the monsoons come, the river can quickly rise to an additional height of up to four meters. In the Gulf of Tonkin, there is a large bay with more than 1,600 islands, the Bay of Ha Long. The sonorous name of this bay is an indication of its mystic atmosphere. Ha Long means the place where the dragon enters the sea. According to a 19th century legend, the origin of this beautiful island dates back to a naval battle between the Viet and a hostile people from the north. Ha Long Bay most likely originated around 500 million years ago, when various mountains formed on the landmass that is now Asia. several centuries, small boats have been in use in and around this picturesque bay. Today, it's also popular with cruise ships. Nevertheless, the range of wildlife species that live on the numerous islands in this part of the world is impressive indeed. The rich vegetation that covers the rocks acts as both a shelter and a home for a huge variety of wildlife, including 40 species of bird and eight varieties of reptile. However, in recent years, both fishing and tourism have highlighted the importance of conservation.
Due to the archaeological discoveries that have been made here, the fascinating and beautiful Halong Bay gave its name to a Southeast Asian Neolithic culture. These bizarrely formed rocks fired the imagination of those who lived here in ancient times. Several of the islands have colourful names. The delightful and natural beauty of Halong Bay is popular with one and all. This island's variety of rock formations, pinnacles and towers produce an outstanding and unique setting, particularly during the magical hours of dawn and sunset. Nature's many moods are an intriguing sight. The gently rippling water bright, majestic sky and limestone mountains that are covered by the golden splendor of the last sunbeams of the day touch the hearts of all who come here. A place of total beauty and one of the world's great natural wonders. The journey north travels high up into the mountains along remote roads through an enchanting landscape of tropical casty hills in the shape of cones and towers. As in bygone times, the farmers here still plough and irrigate their fields with the aid of water buffalo. The mud promises a rich harvest. The visit to the local pottery workshop demonstrates that traditional methods are still very much part of everyday life. The men mould the raw material into various pots. The women cut out patterns in the still soft clay and fashion it using simple techniques, thus creating a range of practical household items. The clay is fired and hardened within small furnaces. Then the women decorate it with traditional patterns. Hoa Bin is one of the North's less attractive provincial towns. But this, the former centre of a prehistoric Bronze Age culture on the Black River, is the gateway to the mountains of the North. Located on the edge of the city is Vietnam's largest hydroelectric generating station, along with its huge dam. Due to various miscalculations in its design, thousands of farming families were forced to move from this area. Small and winding roads lead higher into the mountains. Various minority groups inhabit this remote and unspoiled natural landscape. The roads gradually become smaller and unmetalled. During wet weather, they are particularly difficult to negotiate as they consist of clay. However, those who live here are well versed in creating good agricultural land from the dense jungle-like conditions. The elevated and fertile Mai Khao Valley contains green-covered casty cones that are similar in shape to those of the Chinese Gyulin.
Within a small valley, situated between well-irrigated paddy fields, around 50 families that belong to a Thai minority group live in various lakeside dwellings. High above the Mai Khao Valley, a number of Thai people are sitting at the side of the road. They're cooking a snack, corn on the cob. The narrow road travels higher and higher. The road looks as though it's an integral part of the rock wall. It's the only way to reach the remote valley ahead, to another area that is inhabited by another minority group. The village of Ban Lak Thai, a peaceful place set within an elevated and fertile valley that, due to its location, is difficult to get to. The Thais were the original inhabitants of this valley, but several battles and wars forced them into the mountains. Here, there are both white and red Thai people. As in Mai Khao Valley, here the people live in simple wooden dwellings supported by wooden posts, with roofs made of dried reed. It is believed that the Viet are related to the Thai people and originally separated from the Muong tribe when they cultivated the Red River Delta. Everywhere, the Thai folk offer handmade arts and crafts for sale, such as knitted blankets, woven cloth and numerous bags. The water is supplied by a well and the front gardens contain various vegetables. Everything is extremely clean and well laid out, totally different from North Vietnam's towns. Officially, there are 53 minority groups in Vietnam and mountain tribes inhabit two-thirds of Vietnam. The majority of them settled in this region over the course of many centuries and have either an ethnic, linguistic or cultural relationship. On the arduous journey to the next village, we meet a group of people that are fishing with large nets. At first sight, there's nothing particularly unusual here. This village of the Muong people is quite small and the simple houses are, once again, supported by posts. The mountain tribe of the Muong also lives in small groups and exists from agriculture, especially rice, and breeds cattle. As is common with several other tribes, these mountain people worship their ancestors and also ghosts. Thus, many Vietnamese believe that the Muong are a primitive and uneducated race. The dwellings are surrounded by tiny gardens, and even the cattle live here. In these parts, village life is very much alive and well. Everyone helps his neighbor. In this way, these village tribes survive and retain their individual identity. This fascinating mountain world marks the end of our journey through North Vietnam. From the nostalgic capital of Hanoi, as far as the mountain tribes of the north. A country of both charm and beauty with natural wonders and ancient cultures. 
full of age-old traditions and new hope for the future.